Well, greetings, family. Pastor Jamal here at Rising Ground Church. Hope everybody is having a fantastic Sunday um, and all of that good stuff. So I wanted to come on and um, kind of throw out some reminders um, and hopefully some some encouragement in this strange way, I guess. Um, so let, let, let's just get right to it. So uh, I'm sure some of you heard of the passing of um, Apostle and Pastor Dr. Uh, Frederick Casey Price, um, ever increasing faith ministries. Um, I've heard of him, uh, of course, years and years ago. My mom, my pastor, um, uh, kind of turned me on to you know to him and, and the, the uh, ministry. Ironically, um, back then it was like um, my, my mother was like, you know, I want to see. Uh, and this is no, this is not about race or anything. But she said, you know, Lord, I, I want to see a black pastor who is is really doing something and is influential. And then uh, I think a couple of days later, she uh, was introduced to Pastor Casey Price. And, and, you know, the rest is history. So Friday, Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, I was kind of thinking about things. Me and my wife were, was, was talking about things. We're thinking about faith, kind of thinking about, man, what's, what's going on? Where are things going um, in our own life? You know, what, what's God doing? And um, uh, we kind of just talked about that and then I kind of went, went on our separate ways. And I was thinking about some, some things myself. And I had the thought, I said, you know, I wonder, I wanted to look up again, specifically to people, how did... Casey Price, how did Pastor Fred Price get his faith dome? And and actually Joel, Joel Osteen, how did he get into the place that, that he was at? So I um, was kind of researching Fred Price. And I mean, I had I had looked up some things years before, but, you know, this is a new moment. So I was kind of researching some things. I didn't find the information that I was looking for. But I ran into the uh, Wikipedia and it was, you know, Fred Price was born in 1932. And I was like, and of course it didn't have, um, you know, a passing day because he hadn't died. And what do you know? The next day, um, I, I turn on social media, and there it is. He he passed away, and I was I was shocked because I was like, wow. Um, I just I just was thinking about him just hours and hours later, and then all of a sudden. This happens, and I was, and I found myself kind of emotional about it, not really knowing why, because I don't personally know him, um, and I'm not usually like that. And I was just kind of thinking, huh? I wonder what's all of this about. It's all of this uh, emotionalness about, and um, so I kind of just let it go. And I was reminded of some things. Now. We are going into a time, and I specifically brought that up uh, first for a particular reason, and I'll get into it in a second. But we're going into a time where mantles are being um, given out. People are returning home. Uh, generals of the faith, people of God are uh, being released from their present or their previous moment. <laughs> and new people are coming in. And um, God is doing something really specific. I, I think this has been done in, in degrees and in stages throughout history, but I think it's gonna be done a lot more. And this ministry is actually a, a partaker of what I'm getting ready to say, but this is a mass statement. So I'm saying this for not only us, but for a lot of people who is for, um, Again, mantles are being handed out. Um, mantles are being returned, per se. And God is issuing new mantles out. Um, you are going, you are entering into a season, into a time you have where you will reap where you have not sown. You will reap where you have not sown. Now, what does that look like as far as what I'm saying? Okay, so I had a, um, I had a discussion with my brother and um, one of my brothers, Todd, and we were talking about some, some things. And he he turned me on to um, 
he asked me, hey, had I heard this particular message from Stephen Furtick? And he kind of, he sent me the link and I listened to it and it was about, specifically about the middle. So I want to give a shout out and a thumbs up, thumbs up <laughs> to Stephen Furtick and Todd Tinsley, man. Love you, brother, um, for sharing that with me because it, it really brought some perspective in as far as a lot of, um, a lot of what we're going through now as, as the body, as, and when I mean body, I'm talking about people who have dedicated their lives, dedicated their families, their homes, everything to what they believe God has spoken to them. So we know what that feels like. We know what we've all been going through in our own degrees and our stages of it. And uh, so I got the message and it was like, and, and Stephen Furtick was talking about the middle. So I kind of, I listened and then I, I, I love what God does. So you can literally get, I mean, first, first off, um, God always gives the increase. Everybody waters. You, you, you get water from your pastors. You get water from your, your prophets, uh, your teachers, your evangelists, the people that God have, has placed in your life to speak into it. They water, but God gives the increase. And this is so critical to know because sometimes as we are learning what God is teaching or, 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 or hearing what God is telling, we can feel either valuable or unvaluable. We can feel valuable when we think, when we notice we receive the revelation and then we share it. Sometimes you can feel unvaluable when you hear the revelation and you don't necessarily feel like you got it, but that's always false because God is the one that gives the increase. So whatever you heard, how you heard it, when you heard it from, who you heard it from, God is the one that gives you the understanding and get the, the revelation to share and to pass it on and to expand it. So I heard this word about being in the middle. And, um, you know, you have you have your past, you, your past you, and then you have uh, the you that's right there in this present moment. And then you have um, a target in front of you. Uh, maybe it's God. And God has created a moment where we we move from one place in our journey and we move out of one place right into a new place simultaneously. And, the, and the, 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 what's significant about that for us is this ministry is all around divine flow. Um, and uh, that's, that's, again, that's moving effortlessly into the places where God has planned for you to go. By, by, by whatever means that God chooses. And um, we, had, um, we have a coaching, uh, spiritual coaching business as well. And um, we, we call it door 19. So the number 19 rep represents going into one th going out of one thing right into a new thing simultaneously. So you are, God has moved you from one thing into a new thing. Now, the, the, the funny thing or what's crazy about that, it could seem, is you, you know what God just did. Just like the uh, children of Israel, with his mighty hand, he moved them out of, out of Egypt, out of bondage. He moved them out of bondage with this, with this powerful, uh, miraculous movement. He led them through the sea into this this other place or the, to this new place or headed to this new place, right? So here's this, this orchestration that is undeniable God, undeniably God. And then you go into this new place only to feel like, where is God at now? And if you recall, they, they got into this area where, and then Moses went up to go meet with God and he was gone for, for a while. And they were like, what, what's going on? Where is this guy that just brought us out of here? You know, and then they start reverting, re, re, reverting to old ways or old thoughts or just systems that, you know, rightfully so can kind of pull from you. So you're in a place, you, you get delivered, you're in a place and you're like, what happens next? And then when there's a, when there's a silence, you start to, you know, you start to get tugged in these ways, like what's wrong? And then they made... Uh, they reacted to the moment and it caused them, you know, a bit of grief. 
but I'm not trying to get into that. But nonetheless, the middle. You are in the middle because that's the safest place for you as it relates to spiritual things. We're always going to have to go through pains and moments of discomfort because that's how we grow. So here in the middle, you have God at, in a space ahead of you and you're, and you're following God. So the key is to follow God in the middle from one place into a new place. So we're at a new place and each new place has its, it has its hard moment or its uncertainties. So you move from where you move from to a, to a new place and you, and you know that God brought you there. I'm not talking specifics, but you know that God brought you there. So you, so, so now you move from one thing into a new thing in order to only need God in the new thing. How do you go from needing God in the old thing, being broken free into a new thing or to crossing into the new thing only to need God again in the new thing? It's a safe zone because we always need God, period. If we allow ourselves, if we allow pride and arrogance and all of these things to um, you know, be at the driver's seat, then, you know, the next destination is we're going to crash. So God wants us to know that where you are right now, which you know that God brought you to, either in its discomfort or in its obvious power uh, uh, deliverance, you know God brought you to it. And now you're at a new place where you need God. So the middle always is there because as we, as God has his hand, his hands out for you to grab and you're reaching for them from the middle. And as you step towards the hand, the hand God moves away from you, but not away from you. He's leading you. He's always leading you. It's a picture of being led and it's a picture of needing God all the time. And I wanted to bring that up specifically because again, I personally like giving everybody credit where I've, where I've, heard something that God has um, given me an enlightenment on the way that he will enlighten me. But nonetheless, it came from another's mouth. So I wanted to say that, but I also wanted to say this. Remember, you will reap where you have not sown, meaning there will, there will, you will have things, you will have, um, man, God will pour out and is going to pour out on you in degrees and in ways which you haven't been qualified to receive, but that's fine because it's all God's. Every single word that somebody gets in revelation is all God's. So for, for those of us who, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, people steal people's words. And I think you can only say that from, that's, that's between them and God because they can only, them and God only know what and why they did what they just did. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't let that bother you too much, but just know this, that you will reap where you have not sown. You will be put in place in places where you're not qualified to be because God can trust you, because God has called you, because the mantle has changed in his shifting hands and you have been, yeah, man, you've been qualified and God is doing it. And again, for, 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 for those of us who are, who are obviously in the middle and we haven't recognized that truth yet, uh, rest easy. You're always going to be in the middle. You're always going to need God. If you don't need God, then there's a problem. Just follow his hand as he, as he, as he extends his hand for you to reach out and you reach out and you step towards it and he steps back. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. And that's the beauty of God because he not only wants to protect you from uh, the wiles of the enemy, but he wants to protect you from his righteous wrath and his righteous judgment, meaning we can get out of line and then we're going to be subject to what that, what that brings us. You know what I mean? Rightfully so. So God's love and his perfection is awesome because one, one, one other thing I was reading at Exodus yesterday and I, was, I, I realized that, you know, God's love can't 
override his law. His love can't override his law, but God has systems and strategies in place for you to get wind of and start to use so you can lawfully move through his law or his judgments lawfully and perfectly and righteously and, and peacefully and you and you move right into his love and into his arms so that he can give and 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 um provide everything that you have to have in this new moment that's all i got y'all rising ground church pastor jamal hope it made some sense be in the middle rest assured follow god move from one breakthrough into a new breakthrough into a new breakthrough, into a new breakthrough, into a new awakening. That's all I got. I'll talk to you. Peace.